Hi folks and welcome back. This is Joe and 2DI today coming to you not from the shack but from Joe Lab. Joe Lab is my underground facility that we affectionately refer to as the basement. A few videos back I spoke about amplifiers and spurious emissions. I got quite a few questions so what I'd like to do today is to conduct a quick experiment to allow you to visualize spurious emissions to help folks get a better understanding. I find for myself that a visual representation of something abstract usually helps it to click. So today I'm going to use an RF signal generator, a frequency counter, an oscilloscope, and a spectrum analyzer to simulate spurious emissions. I'm also going to use a vector network analyzer to characterize a filter I built to see if we could use it to block some spurious emissions. If the sound of all that scares you, don't worry. I'm going to keep it simple and not get into too many technical details. The goal here is to get folks that are not RF engineers a bit of a knowledge foothold. And if this helps just one person, then my time is well spent. Okay, so let's get started. Our first stop today is an RF signal generator. This is the BG7TBL WBSG1 RF signal generator. It can output an RF signal from 1 hertz all the way up to 8 gigahertz. For those of you who don't know what this is, you can think of it as an old band transmitter. You dial in a frequency and switch it on, and it's basically like dialing your radio to the same frequency and putting down the key. Now the output is not as powerful as something like an HF transceiver, which is a good thing because most test equipment can't deal with that much power. The output comes out of this BNC connector. This is going to simulate our transceiver or amp that's generating spurious emissions. I'm going to dial in 7.175 MHz, which is the phone portion of the 40 meter band. and the output is on. Now we're going to take that output and connect it to our second stop of the day, the input of my HP frequency counter. This is an HP 5386A frequency counter. A frequency counter does as its name describes. It counts the cycles of an incoming frequency and displays the frequency value that it counts on a screen. Pretty simple. So we're going to take the output of that signal generator and put it into the input of the frequency counter and we can see that it is in fact putting out a signal that's 7.175 megahertz in frequency. So now we know we're generating our signal that's 7.175 megahertz, but what does that signal look like? Well, let's take it over to our third stop of the day, the oscilloscope. This is the Tektronix 2247A oscilloscope. An oscilloscope lets you visualize a change in voltage or a change in time which is perfect for us because an RF signal is a change in voltage over change in time. In fact, this signal is changing 7,175,000 times every second. The screen here shows you the voltage on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Now let's connect our signal to the input of the scope and see what we get. There you go, this is our RF signal. So now we have our RF signal and we know what the frequency is and we know what it looks like. Let's take it over to our fourth and final stop of the day, the Spectrum Analyzer. This is the Tiny SA Ultra. It's a palm-sized Spectrum Analyzer and an amazing piece of equipment because Spectrum Analyzers cost tens of thousands of dollars, whereas this tiny device cost less than a hundred when I purchased it. But you still get a lot of the capabilities of those expensive pieces of equipment, as we will see. A Spectrum Analyzer lets you view a frequency spectrum and see signals that are present in that spectrum. For folks that have rigs with a spectrum display or a waterfall or pan adapter, this is essentially the same thing. Across the horizontal axis you see a portion of the frequency spectrum, and on the vertical axis you get the signal strength. So if we connect the output of our signal generator to the input of the spectrum analyzer, and look at the spectrum, say from 5 MHz to 10 MHz, we would expect to see a spike at 7.175 MHz. Let's see. Now there's one important detail that I should mention. A spectrum analyzer is a relatively sensitive piece of equipment, so I'm going to put an attenuator between the output of the signal generator and the input of the spectrum analyzer to cut down the signal strength. So let's set our span from 5 MHz to 10 MHz.
And as we expect to see, there's a spike at 7.175 megahertz. Now let's zoom out a bit and see more of the spectrum. Let's zoom out so we could see up to 80 megahertz. Now wait, what the heck are all those other signals? Those are in fact spurious emissions. Those are the unwanted harmonics that are being generated. Now let's take a closer look at those spikes. You can see there's markers on them. You may notice that they're evenly spaced. In fact, they're multiples of 7 megahertz. Now the height of these spikes are the signal strength. So look at the second spike here. It's 21 megahertz and change. So now imagine you're talking through your amplifier that's generating spurious emissions. You're trying to talk on 40 meters, but in fact you're being heard on 15 meters as well, and all those other frequencies where you see spikes. So you can see how that could be problematic. Now the FCC says those spikes have to be 43 decibels below the fundamental frequency to be considered acceptable. Basically that means the other signals will be so weak that they won't be heard on those other frequencies. And that's accomplished through filtering. Now to demonstrate this, I have a filter that I constructed quite a while ago. I actually forgot what this was for and what frequencies it filters out, so we're going to have to look at it with my nano VNA. Now some of you know what a nano VNA is. It's a palm-sized vector network analyzer, and hams basically use it as an antenna analyzer, but it's capable of so much more. Now an antenna analyzer is used to measure the standing wave ratio of antennas. It outputs an RF signal and sweeps across the spectrum to measure the reflected power across all those frequencies to generate an SWR plot. Where there is less reflected power, generally, that's where the antenna is most resonant. Generally. I'm being really hand wavy here because that's not always the case, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Now a vector network analyzer is more than just an antenna analyzer because it can not only measure reflected power, but it can measure power through a device because it has an input and an output. If you connect a device under test to the input and the output of the vector network analyzer, it can sweep and show you how much power is going through the device at the frequencies it sweeps across. So it's basically a plot of the frequency response of the filter. It will show you what frequencies can pass through the filter and what frequencies are being attenuated. Now you can see here that I've connected my ugly filter to the nano VNA. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so it looks like I built a bandpass filter that's kind of centered around 50 megahertz which is kind of ringing a bell. It's not for a ham radio project, it was something else that I was working on, but we can use it to suppress harmonics. So what we're going to do is use the RF signal generator to generate a 50 megahertz signal. There should be strong harmonic spurs at 150 megahertz and 250 megahertz and so on. We can verify that with the spectrum analyzer and then we can connect a filter between the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer to see if it suppresses the spurs. Okay, now let's set the RF signal generator to 50 megahertz. Okay, there's 50 megahertz. Now let's take a look at it over on the spectrum analyzer. So as we can see, we have our fundamental frequency at 50 megahertz, and we have spikes at 150, 250, 350, and so on. So now let's put the filter in line and see what happens to those spikes. Okay, and there we have it. The spikes are gone. So the filter works. So if you have an amp that generates spurious emissions, you know what that is now. And you know the internal filtering isn't working correctly or is missing altogether. So you can attach a filter like a low-pass filter after your amp to block those spurious emissions from making it to your antenna. I hope that helps clear things up for folks who are struggling to understand spurious emissions. As always, leave any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So from Joe Lab, this is Joe N2DI wishing you all good health and 73. Bye-bye.